Hey everybody, thanks so much for watching the Arkansas Gun Guy. Today, kind of a different video is to talk about cults, or at least the cult of the Beretta PX4 Storm. The word cult, you know, has probably a negative connotation to it because of all the bad things cults have done over the years. But I do have a couple of firearms that I've made on my channel that aren't the most popular commercially, commercial firearms, commercially, but they are by far firearms that have the most passionate following, get the most views, the most interactions, and again, just have very passionate uh, followers. So, uh, and I've always kind of just in the back of my mind called those guns with cult followings. So I looked up the word cult as I'm thinking through video video ideas, and I want to revisit a couple of words in that definition of cult I flashed up earlier, and that is an excessive admiration for a particular thing, and nothing fits that bill better than the PX4 Storm from Beretta. So we'll talk about why it's different, why people like it. I think it's because it's scarce and different. Some of the performance features that make it really special. We'll talk about outside influence, I'm calling the Langdon factor. And finally, at the end, we'll talk about the people in the cult because there is a site that you can go to for PX First Storm information that is by far, of all the gun sites I've gone to, the most positive and the most informative place that you can visit. So if you're curious about the gun, I would definitely make sure you check out the link at the end I want to show uh, to talk about the people who are really helpful with this gun. So today, to take a closer look, I'm just going to kind of talk about, I have a full-size PX4 Storm here and a compact carry. This one's from Langdon Tactical. Uh, this one is a gun I bought at my local gun store once I found it and sent to Langdon Tactical. So I'll talk about some of the features on both of these. They've all been safety checked, so none of that. But the first thing I think that makes them different is the fact that they're not common. If you go to your local gun store, you probably will not find one of these on the shelf. You may, but not very many. Um, I, I had never seen, one on my, never seen one on my shelf. I saw some videos on it, became interested, contacted my local gun store, and he ordered this for me. Bought it, you know, I felt it, felt great, bought it, shot it, loved it. I then eventually went to Langdon Tactical and bought one directly from them as well. So I don't know that I've actually seen one in my local gun stores. I bought these uh, off the internet, basically. So they're definitely scarce, but they're also different. Beauty's in the eye of the beholder, and many people say these are ugly. I, I think, actually, I think they're kind of cool looking. They're fairly futuristic looking. They're definitely not normal looking like a regular gun. They have more of a rounded feature on the back. Kind of futuristic looking, and I'll tell you, this gun was used in one of the best movies of all time, I think, Inception, which is a sort of futuristic movie, so I thought it absolutely fit the bill for that. So, again, doesn't look like a regular gun, a normal gun, whatever it looks like, but it's definitely unusual looking, somewhat futuristic looking, but I think it's, to me, again, Beauty and the Eye of the Beholder, I think is a spectacular looking gun. So that there's that. It's, it is scarce and it is different. The other thing that's different about it is it doesn't use a traditional browning tilting action. It actually uses a rotating barrel. So I'll show you guys here. So I drop the magazine out. It's over here. Instead of the barrel tilting down to pick up the next round, this barrel rotates. So uh, you watch as I slide, push the slide back and the ammunition feeds straight into the firearm. So that action is fairly uncommon. Grand Power does it in their firearms and Beretta does it with the PX4. There's not a lot of others, but the one thing that really does is instead of allowing the, the barrel to come back and tilt down, adding the muzzle rise, this comes straight, it actually just moves straight back a little bit and twist to dissipate energy and to pick up the next round. It keeps this gun very flat when you shoot. So love, love, love that feature again. And that is just different than most firearms. So it's scarce and it's different, but once you get beyond that, the performance of this firearm is really, really, really good. It is a gun that, for me, is a very flat shooting gun, a gun that I shoot very fast. It does come, there's multiple options. It's configured so that you can um, easily do gunsmithing yourself on there. The trigger module kind of pops out easily. You can interchange parts in there. So all those things make it very, you know, customizable if you want to. But all the stuff about the firearm is great. Ergonomics are fantastic. It does have some adjustable back straps, so you can change your grip angle or the filler grip if you want. It feels great in the hand, has all the stuff you need, like accessory rails. Kind of an oversized trigger guard, but it's rounded, so it has safeties and decockers. This one is the safety and decocker version. They also make a decocker only version. It's got great sights. Again, everything about the thing is good. My favorite thing, though, is the trigger. I'm going to reference two things. This trigger has been upgraded by Langdon, which I'll talk about in a second. But just a standard trigger. This is a, comp a subcompact they no longer make. 
the triggers are the same in it. This has a very standard a standard trigger. So the double action pull is heavy but smooth, very good. But the single action has a good reset, a little bit of take up, and in there. So that's really, really good. This is going to Langdon, and I'll talk about that in the next section where the trigger is even better. So good double action, single action trigger with a good reset on the standard version. Uh, it, the trigger can be made even, even better. So one other thing that I think is really cool is this gun is the easiest gun on the planet to disassemble. 1911s, I hate to take down. I love CZs, but they're kind of, a, they have a few extra steps required. This guy is by far the easiest gun to take down. There's a tab here and a tab here. You don't need to pull back. You, don't, you need to make sure the gun's unloaded, of course, but you don't need to pull the trigger. You do nothing but pull these two tabs down like this. And this thing slides off. Nothing to it. It's by far, by far the easiest gun I've ever tried to disassemble and put back together. So just, it's a very cool gun. It has lots of great features. And the other thing is that, again, H&K and Glock tout their, um, their, their, um, Oh my God, you do a blank on the word. Uh, the reliability. This gun has gone through, what I understand, numerous, numerous tests where there's tens of thousands of rounds with no failures on these guns. So I think the fact that the, you know, the ammo feeds straight in, it's a different action that doesn't wear as much, leads to all those things. But I think Ernest Langdon, who I'll talk about again in a second, has done, I want to say like 50,000 rounds to some firearms, and they've just they've not broken. So it's a pretty cool gun that has a reliability factor that I don't think they maybe tout enough. So it's different. It's reliable. It has all the features you want. It has some really cool features. So what else makes this kind of a cult gun? I think they've seen a resurgence lately because of, of YouTube. That's how I learned about it. But the work that Ernest Langdon has done on the firearms. Again, this is a gun that I bought at a local gun store, then sent to Langdon for some upgrades, a different trigger, which we'll look at. He also um, put different sights on there for me and signed it with the uh, laser engraving. But he also, they do their own guns there. They take a stock, they take a Beretta from, from Beretta, PX4 from Beretta, and do their own work to them. They go inside and coat the inside with, it was NP3, but this Teflon type coating that uh, prevents corrosion, makes everything everything inside super slick and just really, really smooth. But the big thing they do is the trigger. So of all my firearms, these Beretta triggers, may, these PX4 triggers from Langdon may be the best triggers I have. I showed you the double action pull on the standard one. This is the double action pull on the Langdon trigger. It feels like it's about half the weight. Incredibly smooth. I don't know, the, it's probably, I'm guessing five, six pounds max for a double action trigger. But that's not the secret. The reset here is the secret. So watch this reset. The reset is, ah, that's it. It's a millimeter, if that. And then take up, eh, there's none. It just goes right back to the wall. So again, this reset, one more time. Ah, that's it, millimeter. And then you're back at the wall, and it breaks about maybe, they say three-ish pounds. It feels like two-pounder to me. Incredible reset that makes, again, that's pretty easy to shoot fast already, even faster. So again, that rotating barrel and this amazing trigger from Langdon make this for me a gun that I can shoot. I can shoot all 15 rounds out of, the, out of this one over here and just absolutely just do it in seconds and be on target every time. So love the way, I love the performance of these guns. I love the Langdon influence on them. All those things are great. But as I got into the PX4 platform, also did research online. And the big thing I ran into is this amazing PX4 group on Facebook called PX4 Store Storm Owners. And there's a couple of Facebook groups out there with similar names. I'll try to post the picture here, here, here somewhere online that you can see the picture. And I'll also try to put a link to it maybe in the in the description if I can. But it's PX4 Store Storm Owners. And uh, for the background, you'll see four PX4s kind of laid upside down on a table or something. So again, in that group, they have, it's, A, it's been an incredibly positive experience. In some groups on Facebook or on some groups online, if you ask a question, you'll have some smart alecks that pop up and say, you know, those was something snarky or stupid to try and degrade you or make you feel bad. Not in this group. Everything is positive. They have an amazing collection of resources. If you're curious about the Langdon upgrades I talked about, if you're curious about, curious about how to disassemble your gun, how to clean it, how to interchange parts, they have an amazing, amazing set of you know, data collected there that you can reference and you can ask questions and you get answers in the group that are super helpful. So 
all those things to be said. This is a fantastic firearm that has a cult following. I'm in the cult. If you're curious about these firearms, I would definitely recommend one because I think you'll love them. Uh, be sure to check out that group I told you about because if you have questions, if you're curious about getting into the platform, you can ask me here, post a comment below, but also reach out to the folks over at the PX4 Storm Owners Group, and I think you'll be very happy with the service you get. As always, thank you so much for watching the Arkansas Gun Guy. If you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. It'll help me grow my little channel. Thanks.